How is the um? How how's the fatless phase going? It mate, to be fair, yeah, um, it's going it's re it's going really good. I haven't had none of it last. I spoke about it on Instagram yesterday about haven't had no of these refeeds, cheat days, high carb days. I've just literally just been in a deficit for yeah. Um, what seven and a half weeks now? Come to eight weeks, sure. and uh, I've da- I'm down fourteen pounds, which is good. I yep. feel a lot better for it. Yep. Um, some I have some days where I think, right, I could just easily reduce calories here and carbs, and I think no, nope. just because I haven't seen like a change in a couple of days on the scales or whatever, yeah. or my appearance, I think right, I need to drop here. But what I'm what I've been trying to do this time is just not drop um, when there's no need to. If you know what I mean, like my yeah, still sure. weekly average, I'm still in the deficit. It's just because my scale weight hasn't changed for a couple of weeks doesn't mean I need to change anything, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, you're right. I think, yeah, I think the approach of not using refeeds or or high days or anything in a, in a, I don't think you really need them to be fair in a mini diet. Um, right. The the amount of the fatigue that you're going to work up throughout the sort of the seven weeks, it's not going to be that high. Um, no, it's, so it's not. The, the reality of taking it away is just, you know, when you finish it coming out and going into a surplus straight away and that that will do the majority of fixing what you've and the thing is you know when you're trying you're in a bit of a time predicament in the sense that you want to get it done and yeah. then you want to have some more time to to either maintain or level out your body weight and then maybe push up a little bit more before you start a prep so yeah absolutely um, one thing i it's addicting it's yeah. so addictive for me just sit, i as soon as i see like a difference in the mirror and I start noticing bits I haven't seen in a while, and I'm yeah. thinking, wow, I could get used to it. I could diet all year round if I if I really wanted to. It's yeah, but how's training different. performance going to be when you do that? You know. Yeah, I know. I can. I'm already. If I'm honest with you, my it started off first five weeks were fine, nothing. But then as soon as I started getting over the ten pound mark in body weight, presses were just not as good. And it's expected. I knew it was going to happen anyway. It always, it always happens to me. Pressing just goes. Yes. Uh, still, I look at. I kind of look at it right. Where did I start? when I was at the beginning of my surplus and I'm still stronger than, um, well, still stronger now, but it's not as as strong. And I, I feel like, yeah, it's just going to happen, but I'm just going to try and do the best I can really at the moment. Sure. I'm really going to be too like upset about it. Like if I miss a rep here and there and I have to take down the weight by two and a half kilos, I'm not too, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not yeah. going to be upset. I'm not going to try and let it ruin my session because in the past, that's what I've done. I've just let it ruin my session. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want that happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, still logbook and stuff like that, but yeah. I'm not just solely looking, uh, solely looking on my uh, logbook all the time. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just think I'll oh, just close it, George, and just get on with it. Yeah. Instead of thinking, right, what did I do last week? I'm three pounds down this week or whatever. Oh no, the numbers not going to be hit and all that kind of stuff. I think sometimes just close it, mate. Sure. Sure. So, like go and go and give it, give it your all, kind of thing. Um, is the be- is the best option, but I, I I think you know from a logbook perspective. At some stage, people are just going to get really pissed off with their numbers that they're starting to see. But it is it is not it's not the the logbook itself is not just a tool for like understanding where you are from a numbers perspective. It's a tool mm. for understanding how you are in relative performance. So if your body weight's dropping. And you're retaining yeah. some relative performance. The only thing that you need to like really realize, especially when you prep next year, you need to understand that you know, as long as your relative intensity is still there, you're doing yeah. your maximal effort in terms of retaining muscle. Your relative intensity and your volume is there. You you'll re- you'll retain tissue maximally. Um, you can't influence like a lot of the the fact that you're going to lose some pressing strength because if you didn't, it would really not make sense because mm-hmm. everyone does lose some element of strength. Um, and if you, uh, if you in that moment try and hold on to numbers just for the sake of holding on to a number in a book, that's actually probably a way to lose muscle in my opinion, yeah, right? because you'll, you'll start, you'll start using other muscle groups to move the weight. You'll start using inertia. Absolutely using rest pause intraset you know loads of things can come into play um Absolutely. and i anyway. think you you always learn you always learn when yes. you uh go into a surplus you learn more go into a deficit you kind of learn more and then you implement it into your next surplus next deficit and it's always you're always learning which yeah. is good how's the relationship how's it go relationship good mate yeah because 
at, well, she's at the moment. At the moment, she's been on holiday. So this is literally what happened. We got together, and two days later, she went on holiday because uh, she's originally from. Had enough well, of you already. Parents from, <laughs> that again. Had enough of you already. She just fucked off. Oh no, she just <laughs> did one. Um, she didn't go on holiday for like a week or anything like that. She went away for three weeks. Um, and Jeez. I was like, shit, did I, I was like, did I ask her at the right time? You know what I mean? Like, did I, should I just wait till she got back? Or I kind of felt like, right, I need to seal the deal before she goes away to uh, Morocco. Seal the deal. Um, and, but she's coming back tomorrow. Ooh. So I've got to pick her up from Gatwick tomorrow, which is, uh, going to be a fun journey down the old M25. Um, but yeah, literally it's going okay, but I do, I do actually miss her. I do yeah, actually miss sure. her. I not believe I'd uh, miss someone like that. Yeah, no, I bet, I bet, I bet, man. Like you know, if you if you connect, do you, do you find you connect with her quite well? Your conversation yeah, flows see, really she, well. And... She she came down. We've known each other for about two years now, and she used to come down and see me at uni because um, oh, cool. obviously I spoke about at uni and stuff like that. How it was quite lonely for me and stuff like that, and she made mm. me feel really like kind of. She made me feel a little bit better, and it was nice to spend time with a bit like a female instead yes. of just time with the boys and stuff like that. And um, we've always got a long, always message, but we've never really taken that step forward, if you know what I mean, until yeah. I finished uni. I think the main reason why we didn't take that step forward is probably because I was at uni. Um, mm. I, won't, I wasn't really interested in a relationship when I was at uni. Um, I was just literally just focusing on education and yeah. the gym, which is yeah. I still do now, pretty much still focus on my education and gym. But I thought, right, I need something else in my life now that I can kind of focus on as well. Because it's all good focusing on bodybuilding, but I got so into it and so, like, separating myself from everyone else. Uh, like, I was missing opportunities and stuff like that, and I thought, right, I need to get a miss. Well, it, we, we were still kind of speaking and stuff like that, but it weren't really taking it to the next level. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really happy right now, actually, believe it or not. Good. Good man. Mm. Anyway, I want to know about you, though. I want to know about you. So you always keep it quiet. Well, you kept it quiet sort of thing, which is totally mm. fine. But Rome, how was that? Talk to me about the... Is it is it a thing? Is it a relationship? Or is it just a friend? Or is it nah, just... No, nah, it's, it's not, man. I think most people know that. Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the, reality, the reality is, like, you know, the person I went to Rome with, like, very, mm. very nice. But sometimes you just don't like massively click with an individual and that was just that was just it you know and I'm sure that there's many people out there that would definitely click with with that girl in, in that moment but absolutely yeah I think think for me what what's happened in the in the past um in terms of kind of wasting my fucking time with relationships not out of their yeah. fault but mainly out of mine in the sense that I know it didn't feel right and I just did it anyway because or I went through with a relationship anyway because I don't know. I I just thought, oh, okay, yeah, it'll be all right, kind of thing. But it won't yeah. be perfect, or it won't fit very well. And in, at the end of the day, it's going to end at some point because it's not right. So absolutely, why you know why sort of put someone's time and effort at bay for just something that's not not going to be good? So absolutely. that that was my opinion on that, dude. But you know, I'm not. I'm like you know. I'm not really actively searching for anything. I'm, I guess, I'm sort of more in a in a place where if if something comes to me and it and it feels good, it feels right. And obviously, like you've said with your current relationship, you know, it feels like you connect and you sync well together. Then I'll be all all for that. But you know, right now I'm not like messaging a ton of girls saying, you know. Let's see yeah. if we connect. No, fuck that. Yeah. Like it, it, it would just happen. It would just sometimes happen. there's a time where you can't sit there and expect it to come to you. You have got to go get it yourself. I um, I've done mean. that in the past where I just sit here and just expect the girl to message me and stuff like that. That never happens. Um, no, it doesn't happen to me. Um, <laughs> I think one one important thing as well is just you need to find someone that is willing to support what I do and what you do as well. Like, for yeah. example, my ex absolutely hated me going to the gym and didn't enjoy anything related to the gym or to me eating chicken and asparagus or fish in the morning absolutely hated it and used to moan or complain about why I'm doing that and I'm thinking if you're not going to support me then why why am I going to bother like yeah it's just literally and that's how we broke up if I'm honest with you um it was just I came back from uni in my first year 
um, I come back for the summer and I literally just wanted to focus on myself, but she wanted to see me all the time, all the time. Then we went on holiday and it's kind of holidays make your break uh, and that broke us and I was like, right, no more. But luckily with my missus now, she's very supportive in what I do. She's willing to, look, there's a gym in the local area where I live. You can go there whilst I do something else. And I'm, I, I like that. I'm like someone who's willing to support me with my YouTube and yes. uh, bodybuilding and all that kind of stuff. I'm over the moon by that. And that's what I've always looked for. Um, yeah. If a girl... Yeah, you, like, even if they're not into it themselves, you know, I don't, I don't think... I don't think they necessarily have to be a competitor or have to, you know, go and train themselves to, to necessarily support what you do. But from an understanding perspective, I think, you know, when I've been seeing or been around girls that do compete, they do definitely understand things and the process a lot better. But, you know, sometimes you wonder whether there's going to be a clash at some point in terms of the fact that, you know, your life is you know and my life as well is is very uh it, it surrounds bodybuilding a lot you know and it's yeah. uh it's quite intensive in the way that we go about things it's sometimes i i sometimes think you know would it be beneficial to have someone that that didn't really display much of an interest in it to sort of take me out of that zone a little bit mm -hmm. um but equally I, i'd also like someone that was very interested in it and competing because i feel like that 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 working together, if it connected properly, would work really fucking well. Um, yeah. But we'll see. You know, we'll see. I'm, I'm there's, in, no, there's no rush to it, is there? I'm, in, no I'm in no rush to have a yeah. kid and a dog and a house. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. That. No, I'm Quite not happy ready. at home. <laughs> I'll be standing on my own two feet, let alone bloody getting a house and kids and all that. Oh, yeah, no. Jesus. Like right, that. so let's, let's get through some of these Q&A questions as well. Yeah, so I've got a few. We've given the listeners some clickbait now. Let's just answer some <laughs> questions. So um, uh, I guess what we'll, uh, if you bring it up on your story as well, what we'll do is we'll just go back and forth. Yeah. So okay. um, we'll I've go back and forth. Thing. I'll do one, you do one. So... Do, 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 do. I can't even find. Oh, one minute. You have to, yeah. You have to click yeah. on the story and then find the find the the post. Yeah, um. Right. So let's go with just a very very simple one to start. Which do you prefer, bulking or cutting? That's from Callum. Callum P. Callum P. Uh oh. Myself, I probably. To be fair, I prefer, I prefer dieting. Hundred percent for diet dieting. I just think it's just. I, I feel like with my calorie surplus, there's no like, there's no end goal. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just feel like right, the motivation starts to go down a little bit. Whereas when I'm in a deficit, I feel like right, there's a set goal, there's a set target here. You start to see a little bit of a difference in your physique, um, and especially if you're competing as well, there's an end goal to get on stage and stuff like that. Well, when you're in a calorie surplus, although it's great for, yes, we are trying to build as much muscle as possible when trying to progress our lifts and taking our body weight up to another level or whatever and all that kind of good stuff enjoying the time off and some people like to have times off mm. um i just feel sometimes like my motivation will start to especially if i'm in a, a 30 week surplus my my motivation will just dip it will just dip and i'm just looking in the mirror and i'm thinking for that belly's getting a little bit bigger yep. looking it's not it's not going as well as what I would imagine in my head or when I look on the internet at some pro bodybuilder who's 300 pounds off season and he's absolutely he just looks like a big thick rugby player even yeah. though I can't even know what I mean but instead I just look like a fat boy yeah uh, I can I can relate to you on that one dude and I think you know from my perspective and to answer Callum's question I'm at the like the peak or very close to the peak of my gaining phase right now and in previous gaining phase, what would happen is I'd see that dwindle in motivation and I'd also see a dwindle in my ability to be structured with my intake throughout the day. So Absolutely. it would be it would be a case of becoming lazy with nutrient timing, becoming lazy with food options and just getting in the calories for the sake of getting in the calories. Whilst that's like, you know, at the end of the day, the pivotal factor in terms of whether we gain weight or not, whether we stay in a surplus, it's not pivotal in terms of maximizing body composition in the phase that you're currently in. You know, you want to still be timing your nutrients well. You want to be eating Absolutely. good quality food sources um, and you want to be staying structured because the structure that you have in your off season leads you up and into a successful prep. So 
for me, I I've learned to love the off season more the more I've gotten into it. You know, yeah, now it, like I look at myself in training videos when I put them up on the site or I put them up on Instagram. I'm like, wow, actually, even in a t shirt, you know, I I look relatively like I lift kind of thing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But when but when I'm dieting, you know, if I put any anything up when I'm in clothing, I just look like an absolute fucking stick stick insect. I mean, mm-hmm. my stage weight is below 150 pounds, and you know. Oh yeah, it's, that's going to be the same with me, mate. Yeah. Um And it's just how that's skinny. I'm, that is accept- skinny as yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I I just yeah. I don't like this like an average girl like kind of way. Yeah, and is it is it really that fun being <laughs> under 150 pounds like? You know, I, I sometimes, and I look back at stage photos and I'm like, wow, that was wicked. You know, I loved waking up and doing posing and, and seeing, mm. you know, all the striations and, and yeah, I did kind of like that. And I liked the look. Um, I also like the aesthetic look. Like I, I prefer the way my face looks when I'm in the deficit. I prefer the way my skin looks when I'm in, def- in a deficit. Like I prefer a lot of things about being in a deficit, but the main the main thing that I I massively prefer about about gaining is that I know if I get my sleep if I structure my training my nutrition well the training session on that day is is going to be of some point progressive um, yeah and that's the fun of it like I love progressive training and and if I didn't have that in a gaining phase I think I'd just die it year round I'd be like some sort of Instagram model yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. cool um, you pick one then. Um, I've got one from Aaron Frondley. Frondley, I think he says carbs on rest days reduce or keep consistent throughout the week. Oh yeah, okay. So taking this first, it, it totally depends on on where you're at. So I think from a insulin sensitivity point of view, um, most people will comment that to actually regain sen- insulin sensitivity on a whole. So let's say you're starting to become at a point in a gaining phase where you're you're not as receptive to carbohydrates anymore you'll start if you take your blood glucose you're starting to see high readings things like that you're not going to necessarily imp- impact your insulin sensitivity in a positive manner by one day of reducing carbs on a rest day um, it may momentarily drop blood glucose levels but on a whole if your training day macros are where they're at and body fat levels are where they're at you're not going to drastically influence your sensitivity to nutrients by doing one day of lower carbohydrates you'll need to go hypercaloric for a longer period of time so you need to be in a deficit for a longer period of time like you're doing okay so you're gonna you're gonna come out of this mini diet phase very sensitive to nutrients and that's going to stay with you for quite a while now on on the way up when you're actually gaining weight and coming up in calories could dropping your carbs on a rest day when activity levels are are lower be beneficial in terms of prolonging the time that you're insulin sensitive potentially um but you've got to be careful the number one thing and i know that we've both shared this thought in the past is that we are eating for performance we're not necessarily eating just for body composition when we're in a gaining phase so if you're seeing huge detriments in your performance on lowering carbohydrates on a rest day, then you've got to reassess that and think as to, okay, this is not providing me with enough glycogen for my next day of training. Um, Absolutely. If you're if you're in a deficit, that's that's pretty frequent that that can happen. You know, if you're if you're overall your overall weekly calories, you're in a deficit and you're dropping your carbs more so on a rest day, you're gonna fall into the point where uh, you will see a diminish or a lack of performance on the next day following that lower carb day. Um, so I think in a in a prolonged gaining phase, yes, uh, could could be could be beneficial in terms of maximizing or prolonging the length that you can stay in a surplus and stay sensitive to nutrients. Uh, in a diet phase, I'd just be wary in terms of how it impacts your performance. That's just my opinion. What's, what's yours, mate? <laughs> So I've I've experimented with both both in a, a calorie surplus and in a deficit. For me, in a in a surplus, like like we said, um, I just noticed straight away if I was having, for example, I'd just carb back load. So the whole day I pretty much go pro fat, and then I would carb back load with like porridge oats before I go to bed. I kind of quite like that. I did, but um, I found like like you said, performance was just downhill. Scale weight the next day was just like 
two or three pounds obviously lighter and I also one thing which I found as well it gave me the craving to like I just wanted to eat junk food if I'm honest with you my wow. relationship with food became really unhealthy mm. uh, and I was having like a, maybe for example 150 grams uh, of carbs on a rest day and I was having my typical 500 600 grams of carbs on a training day mm. I just found that that last meal as soon as I started eating a bit of carbs or whatever my chocolate in my oats started to get more and more and more and then I started putting start I started eating like kind of just handful of stuff and I was thinking wow this is kind of getting unhealthy here and I was like right scrap that because like, like we said performance was just the next day was just downhill um and I was just literally so I was looking at the time I was thinking right I'll be eating in another three hours so I just kind of I was so focused on food on that day when mm. I reached the amount of yes. carbs and carb back loaded or whatever this protein and fat was just not doing it for me if you know what I mean sure um I've done it in a deficit right now I kind of reduce my amount uh, the amount of um carbs I use on a rest day but I need to I think we need to consider the um the person's lifestyle so for example if someone's working on a rest day and no expenditure like I have a few clients do like 40,000 steps he tells me he does 40,000 steps a day which is absolutely crazy mm. so for a rest day I'm not going to give him a, a, a kind of a, a really low carb day no because the requirements there like I feel like for example if you're on a rest day you're doing literally fuck all you're sitting down you're not really creating a demand for that food although the goal here is to obviously recover mm. Um, on a rest day but you're not really creating a, d a demand for me so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I typically um, will kind of assess how people's lifestyle is and stuff like that and what they're doing expenditure wise or how busy their works they might be like a builder who does like 12 hour shifts for example mm. I'm not going to give them a low carb um, diet on a rest yeah. day and stuff like that so it's all kind of um, down to the individual I've experimented with both I hated uh, the kind of no carbs on a rest day, especially in a surplus, because I was just thinking, well, I want to just literally eat junk food here. And performance was downhill. Scale weight, the goal was for me was just to, obviously we want to increase our body weight in a surplus, but for me, I was dropping like two pounds from just obviously water, glycogen, whatever, and stuff like that. And I was yeah. just like, nah, it's just not for me. Nah, it's not uh, productive. Yeah, I think what you mentioned in terms of sort of going off the lifestyle, it, it, it's very important. I think one last thing to add as well is, is just sort of how many days you're training. If you're training six days a week, I don't think dropping calories on that one rest day is a really good idea, to be honest, because you're 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 demanding so much from a recovery standpoint that it, it leads into that rest day. Um, it will Absolutely. it will follow into that rest day, and you've really got to maximise that that one day that you have to recoup recover and get back into a you know another six days of of training you have got to eat you have got to absolutely eat. otherwise exactly. you, you yeah. will see um you will see a decline in performance so yeah that's that um absolutely. next question um i had one lad say that he uh he just wanted to say thank you because of the last podcast and apparently you're coaching him now that's pretty fucking cool <laughs> his okay name is, his name's yeah, jamie that's... Oh yeah, Jamie. Yeah, I oh, know Jamie. Yeah, top lad. Good boy. Cool. Love him. Um, oh, interesting one. Who does George want to be coached by when he competes, or will he coach I himself? I have the exact same question as that. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lick your ass here, but it's gonna it's gonna be you, mate, because you literally know so much about me. I'll be totally honest with you. You've kind of, you know, with with your clients, you need to kind of, you need to, you you've done the job in regards to making me feel like right. You know so much about me. You know pretty much my lifestyle, yeah. what I eat, what I don't like. Yeah. I'm not going to go to some random. Although this coach might be absolutely amazing, he might he hasn't got a clue about me. He hasn't got a clue about my lifestyle. You watch my videos. You know what Dude. I do day to day. You see my stories. <laughs> you know exactly what I respond to well and what I do. And of course. it's it's going to for sure. I'm 95 percent <laughs> sure you'll be coaching me next year. 100 um, percent. That's. That's that's it. That's all I've got to say about it. Because you made <laughs> that's what I say for anyone. Because I had someone actually ask me about like coaching and stuff like that. You need to kind of make the effort. You need to kind of do something out of the box with your potential like clients. You need to kind of right. I don't want 
most all my clients know me for because of who I am and what I do and stuff like that. Yeah. They don't. It's not like a rat. I'm like a random person to them. They watch my videos on a daily basis and stuff like that. You kind of. I feel like you need to kind of go outside the box uh, and make that kind of effort. I think I kind of. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but it's you kind of get the gist of it. I think. Yeah. It's it's like we were talking about with relationships. You said very rightly. You know, you're not going to have something come to you if you sit there and expect it to come to you. Absolutely. Like if. If I if I ever see potential in someone, I'm likely to invest in them a little bit. Yeah. Um, well. And you know, not not I'm not gonna lick your ass, but not only do I see potential in you, the main the the biggest potential that I see in you is, is just your work ethic, dude. You know, like every, everything that you do in terms of being consistent, applying yourself, um, not really giving a fuck if people start hating on you. Like I like and I can relate all, yeah. on all of those things. So. That's yeah. That's I think I think again with a coaching relationship, it's about whether you get on with that person, whether you relate to them. Um, it's it really really isn't, especially when it gets to the nitty gritty, and you start trying to tap into an individual's mindset to get them to that next level. You've got to really fucking know them. You've got to know what you can say. So I've got to know that when a client messages me, I've got to know how how I can respond to it in a way that's going to, one, either motivate them to move forwards um, or get them doing the task that I want them doing. Absolutely, and sometimes yeah. it's it's really blunt and it's really harsh stuff that I might say, but I know that some people can handle that and I know that some people can't. Um, yeah. And that's just through exactly what you said, and you know, knowing them and spending time asking them questions. And I think, you know, relationships, clients, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever you want, you know, you've got to be able to understand the person and know them. Um, and I was actually saying to a friend the other night, like, how many people in, in a lot of relationships do you really think actually know each other nowadays? Because mm. when, when do you see when do you see people asking like a ton of questions or trying to get to know people? Most conversations now are just fucking shite small talk. Like, how are mm. you? How are you doing? How is your day? It's yeah. bullshit, isn't it? No one actually asks like questions no. like, yeah. What did you do when you were a kid, or what's your plans for the next five years? Like those are the exciting questions that I always ask people when oh. you know I'm looking to get to know someone. So I think that's important, dude. I think that's uh, that's absolutely. Cool. It's also like the philosophy as well. Like uh, I was looking at Nathan Diash's um, Instagram stories the other day, and he, mm. people asked him, "Would you ever get coached by JP?" And he was like, "No," because we have the two different. Uh, philosophies you know yeah. what I mean like, I don't follow his principle of training whereas you I kind of follow your kind of training style and I know what you, you would give me as a coach like yeah. I wouldn't expect someone to come to me and be into I don't know powerlifting if you know what I mean or crossfit or something like that um because that's not my I don't I'm, that's not what I do if you know what I mean I'm not I don't have a clue about that like for example if they were uh, taking steroids I wouldn't have a clue yeah if I'm honest with you. so I wouldn't take someone on if they was on gear or whatever so i think philosophy as well is kind of important yeah i totally um, agree let's go for it let's go for another couple see where it takes us um i've got one here oh god oh, um someone's got best all right just to go over this one best pre-workout meal and timings uh okay so i i think again this is massively relevant to the individual um, and where they're at, but I think anywhere between 50 and 100 grams of carbs would be a good place to start. Um, if you're, then we come into fats, so, uh, well, the source, sources of carbs, ideally something that's going to be slightly slower digesting, so I know that you're a fan and I'm a fan of, 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 por of porridge oats, as you call them, or oats, <laughs> oats. Um, porridge oats, <laughs> but yeah, uh, do I call it that? I don't even think. I think mean, I do actually. There's no, nothing no. wrong with calling it that. Um, so yeah, yeah, something like that, slightly slower digesting, and uh, from a fats perspective, uh, you've got to look at where you're at. So if you're in a surplus, doesn't matter so much with the fats purely yeah. because you're gonna be holding a lot of glycogen anyway. So the chances of going into hyper hyperglycemia is fairly low. But when you're dieting and glycogen levels are low, having some fats, especially if you're not having any intra-workout, is very important. Because Absolutely. otherwise you'll experience re reactive hyperglycemia in your training, which is when your blood sugars drop 
you'll feel extremely low, extremely um, sort of lightheaded. You won't be able to you won't be able to see any or sort of your normal strength levels because you'd be half passing out in the gym. Uh, I have a lot of females that have come from previous coaches where previous coaches have put them on very very low fat diets. You know their their meals are just sort of chicken rice, chicken fish, and they experience reactive hypoglycemia every time they fucking train. And they're wondering Absolutely. like, why do I feel so shit? Like, this is why. Um, so if you're having, if you're not having any, any intra workout carbs, then definitely putting some fats with your pre workout meal would be good. Um, I'd recommend anywhere between, at the, at the very lowest five grams, but sort of closer to that ten to fifteen gram bracket would probably see some benefit. Um, in terms of sources, again, sort of nut butters or. Our favourite dark chocolate is is quite a good one. Um, dark chocolate also increases vasodilation, um, which can be a good thing to have pre workout. It's been yep. shown to do, uh, have some, especially in anything above sort of seventy five percent, has some cognitive benefits as well. So if you want to get focused, neurally engaged, then having some dark chocolate would be good. And then pro- protein wise, again the the dosage is depending on the individual and their body weight, but starting at a lowest of a 20 gram threshold of high quality protein yeah. um anything upwards of of i'd say at maximum if you're a very heavy guy 50 grams um but again from a protein standpoint you're probably gonna want to go with something that's very easy to digest like an yeah. isolate or a whey um if you're going for something like beef or uh you know especially sort of fattier cuts of beef and things that are harder to break down uh, you want to understand whether you digest that well or not because you don't want to go into your training session feeling bloated or distended or extremely full. Um, so for, for me, a gen, uh, at the moment, my pre-workout meal is 150 grams of oats, which is about 90 carb. Um, yeah. And then usually a little bit of blueberries, which takes up to about 100 carb. And then uh, usually 45 grams of whey isolate. And... Depends what nut butters I have in, but if it's the nuts and more nut butters, usually about 30 grams of that because they're a bit higher in protein, a bit lower in fat. Um, yeah. But if it's any other nut butter, then usually 20 to 25 grams. Uh, if it's dark chocolate, then 20, 25 grams. Anything like dark chocolate and normal nut butters, 20 to 25 grams is about 10 grams of fat. Um, so that's sort of just a normal gauge. And yeah. a ton of pink Himalayan rock salt. For the Absolutely. Pump. Yeah, love it. Um, what about you, man? I guess, I guess you'd pretty much agree with, with most so, of yeah, that. So, yeah, I'd pretty much agree. What about uh, timing for you? How long do you have to leave between your see, pre and your... Me, me and you are very different. I know that you can um, eat, eat your pre-workout and you can literally go to the gym. Whereas me, I will actually... I literally have to wait an hour. I will. I, will, I won't leave the house till I'm... I'll probably train, I'd say, by the time I get to the gym, warm up, I reckon it'll be about an hour to... An hour and a half to hour, 40, hour and 40 minutes before I actually train. Yeah. I'll, pre-workout meal yeah um i found obviously with uh with porridge oats sometime right now i'm totally fine with it like uh but i, I have in the past especially in a surplus had a slight bit of bloating off it obviously due mm. to like fiber intake and quite high protein intake with like the the whey and the actual oats having protein in it um but at the moment i i i find that fats well for me fats i kind of keep my fats around 15 um even i even though i keep my uh carbs and everything pre and post and intra um the peri workout i i keep around 15 um and i find that is my sessions are like two hours two and a half hours i'm total about three hours out of the house that's totally fine with me yes. um i feel like if you're trained for an hour or so Fats are probably not really gonna be. You don't even crazy high if you're just training for an hour, forty-five minutes. I don't think yeah. that's really necessarily important. Um, but yeah, I think you pretty much summed up, mate. If I'm honest with you, like I say, in timings. If anyone's watching this and think, what should I do? I would just experiment. For example, I would eat your food, go an hour afterwards, see how you feel. If you feel like shit, then don't do that. You know what I mean? If you want to try a little bit later, then do that. Some people eat two hours after eating. Uh, some people train two hours after eating. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think it's just a experiment. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think it's just a um, a gauge thing. You know, just whether whether you can sort of gauge like you know your ability to get into a session and perform without feeling bloated i I must admit though with the whole leaving time thing mine's getting longer and longer i'm having to leave longer and longer as i'm getting 
more calories in and my body weight's getting higher. You know, when, when I was when I was prepping, I could literally just eat and go because my body would just like, fumph, like just suck mm. everything up. But now it's like, yeah. like, it takes a fucking long time for me to digest yeah, things. That, that was the same as me. I'm, my time, I'm, I'm, I still go. I still kind of keep it um, kind of consistent in regards to my meal timings and how long I leave after the gym. But I, I feel like I'm ready to go a lot earlier now when I'm in a deficit for sure, especially when I'm like 15 16 17 hours um, without any carbohydrate source um i definitely feel like i can go um a lot sooner but yeah. i always keep it consistent and like i said just experiment for anyone who gives a fuck my uh my pre-workout is 125 grams of oats which is 75 grams of carbs 100 yeah. grams of banana which is 20 grams of carbs uh 35 grams of whey isolate um and then just about uh, like two grams of pink himalayan salt yeah good to go that's, perfect that's, um, so. cool man i think we'll leave it there for today purely yeah. because it'll look good on youtube when it's 35 and not an hour yeah so yeah. we could yeah. quite easily go on for an hour so we'll do another we've got loads of questions to answer so yeah absolutely. I've got we'll, um, we'll, we'll either come back next week or we'll, we'll schedule in at some point but yeah, yeah man definitely. Thank you, thank you for that. And uh, what, no, what's your plans you. for the rest of the day? Are you training? Um, I'm not training today. Uh, I've got a rest day, so cool. the plan is to. Um, cause I need to pick up because like, I ordered a hat, like a logo. I need to go and pick that up with, with a nut on it. I'm just just sampling a few hats at the moment, see if I like them, stuff like that. It's quite hard. Yeah. Um, so in contact with like the university and stuff like that in regards to uh, like finding work which actually relates to my degree and stuff like that because although my coaching is great at the moment and it's income yeah, it's just not something. enough for yeah, my, you need man. i need more simple that i'll be brutally honest it's not enough yes for my lifestyle and having a missus now and stuff like that i need more money yeah um so job hunting still uh it's a bit of a ball ache but like i said we'll get there and you will man some bobs just try and put my feet up as well a little bit yeah you will and when you get something you'll uh You'll be able to run that alongside your coaching until your coaching's at a point where you'll be able to quit that. So, and I, I genuinely believe that by the end of this year, you'll be very close to be able to do that. You know, you've got six, five, six months left of the year. No reason why you can't get tw like twenty consistent clients in. If you have twenty consistent clients in, that's enough. Yeah, that's enough to keep you going, man. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's yes. hope. So. Yes, definitely. <laughs> cool, dudes. Keep... Well, yeah. cheers again. Appreciate Thank you. And uh, oh, yeah, anyone that listened, thank you very much. Um, make sure that you share our two faces on your story and tag us in it and let us know what you want to see next. Yeah. Whether you yeah. want us if, to talk about... If you enjoyed about... this as well, like, let us know. Let us know. Because yes. a lot of people, a lot of people message me saying, like, I really enjoy it. And it's like, wow. Like, yeah, it's good. It's nice. It. So let it's us know nice if you enjoy it. Um, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, All thank good, you very mate. much, man. All right. Appreciate it. All right. In a bit. See you in a bit. See ya.